Good morning all. First of all, I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, ICT Academy, also the Oracle Academy, uh, for giving me this opportunity to come and uh, talk in front of you. So why don't we just start with a quick question. So what do you think is a noble profession? Teaching, right. So I think even Google endorses this. So I just want to take this opportunity to first thank you all because though parents are of our biological creators, I think teachers are the ones who will be creating these individuals and giving that all uh, intellect and all that, right? So I think a big round of applause for whatever the hard work you're doing. So I was just searching in Google like, what is this? And I just want to show it to you that how important you are. Okay, so let's start with uh, uh, the today's topic is augmenting skills and accelerating growth, right? So I was just thinking on how to talk about it. And it's, it's because there are so many things and also I need to fit all this in 20 minutes, right? So I, I, I just thought of thinking from a top-down approach. So we have so many players in this entire journey, right? We have policy makers, the government, and all that. And we have industry, we have academia, and we have students, right? So I just thought of setting some goals first on what each one of these are looking at and try to see how we can relate things and probably take it to something, okay? So with that, let me just take my first goal. I think you might have read in the news, right? We are talking a lot about $5 trillion economy. And I think you might be knowing already today we are at around 2.7. And I think if we can take every year at a 9%, so I think in the next five years, we'll be there. That's what is the goal. But I think today's news from IMF, the projection is that we are at around 6.1% growth rate for this year, probably 7% next year. That's what is the news today. So with that, I think probably this may be delayed a bit, but I think this is still achievable. So the next thing is, from an industry standpoint, what is the challenge and goal? Because the reason why I'm putting only one one is, I know like every stream has a lot of goals and a lot of challenges, but I just want to pick one of the important thing, which is really most striking, right? The reason why I pick uh, uh, the regulation or the regulation, changing regulatory requirements as one of the goal is like, you might be hearing a lot about 5G coming into picture. You might be hearing a lot about drones. You might be hearing a lot about data localization. So all these are related to regulatory stuff. And I think there's a lot of things going on, and I think we, as an industry, we need to align very quickly and all that, right? So that is the reason this is one of the important aspects to look at from an industry standpoint. So I just want to take one example. Like uh, recently, um, uh, we, we are working a lot on one of the European regulations. So how many of you have heard about it? Uh, I'm not sure. But there is something called GDPR. How many of you heard about that? Yeah. So this is one area which is really taking a lot of effort for, from the industry to prepare, to align, and all that. And, and this is nothing but general data protection regulation. And the intent of this is to protect the data. And you might be wondering why we need to worry too much about protecting the data. In the traditional mode, I think, before internet, I think it was more the data is residing in the individual um, organizations and all that. But with the invention of internet, I think data is floating around freely. So I think there should be some way to control that and regulate that. And that is what was the intent of GDPR. And this is basically a law which got into effective from uh, May 25th last year, 2018. And it, it requires all these software systems, IT systems to be, what you call, aligned and updated and uh, uh, made the necessary changes. So that is the reason this is important from an industry standpoint. Similarly, from the academic standpoint, I think you know, right? This is, I think, no brainer here. So we need to adapt to the changing technology. I think, I think the last uh, uh, two um, keynotes, I think, saw a lot of technologies talking about. So I think this is an important aspect for everybody here. And the, the last one is about the student, right? So I think the student is worried because he might be reading a lot about AI taking over and uh, what is going to how I'm going to sustain, what kind of skills I need to have to probably survive and sustain in this particular um, journey. So this is from a student perspective. 
so i think we have all the players so what is that we need to do is what is the common thing which can connect all these so that is what is nothing for skill right so we will try to get on to the details little more but this is what is the context i just said and looking back a bit bit on the history i think if you, if you can um, um, take thousands of years ago like the way civilization has been evolved so it took like thousands of years for us for us to probably get to know about agriculture or for us to get to know about how we can live together as a community and all that but slowly what happened was we got into industrial revolution and you know the history of all that right but what is one of the thing which is really uh, evident from this evolution is the duration of this change is coming down right so earlier no thousands of years then hundreds of years now i think we are we are yet settling down in the third revolution or industry 3.0 now we are in the uh, what do you call we are trying to catch up with industry 4.0 so that is what is so so when 20 years back when i started my career people used to tell me change is constant change is but now i think people are talking about change is accelerating so i think we need to see how we can catch up right so that is what is the important thing we all need to understand i think a common thing from wikipedia which which can talk about all that so the next thing is having said the context now what is that we do is we need to see what is our current state so typically any um, analysis starts with some for something called swot analysis i think you might be knowing it right swot analysis is strength weakness of and threat so i also thought of putting again a quick bullets on this what is our current state so if i if, if i put it as strength and, and again this something very much known to all of you right that the average age in india is around 29 years this is by 2020 so 60% of the people are in there so this is the strength for us but we need to see how we can leverage the second thing is weakness part is yes reach of technology and reach of uh, internet and whatever the great and late latest things what we are talking about whether it is really there with the with everybody because it is still not there so how we can probably fill that gap is the next in terms of opportunity we have a lot of core sectors i know like it and pharma is something which we are leading ahead but i think we have so many other sectors like renewable energy and uh, uh, electronics and all that which where no we can do more it's not like we are not doing but i think we have a lot of potential to do this is more from an opportunity standpoint and threat is basically on the research because i was also reading in one of the um, article that the the demand for the higher education research not picking the way we are expect right because even i was also trying to check how we are faring on the research so we are not uh, and, and comparatively like china is really doing good and uh, i was reading about the most um, cited research papers in, the, um, uh, in some of these uh, institutions so i think china is taking around 26 28 27% head on with us but i think we are not there yet in spite of research being is our our own uh, this one and we, we have people who invented zero in uh, india and we have if you, from then no if you look back nobel prizes what we got is only cv raman and then chandrasekhar right that's it in science and technology i know like we got nobel prizes in other areas but i think these are the in the science and technology i think we have a lot of potential but we need to still pick up and care up so that's the reason i thought like this or this is probably reflects the current uh, uh, situation of us and the next thing is how to convert whatever whatever the parameters just mentioned into a growth story right so i just thought of talking about the two things augmenting skills and what is, what is the next one is accelerating right so the way i try to put this here is so i have three parameters so how we can first prepare our so definitely education is one aspect infrastructure is one aspect and the third one is what is the social and the behavioral aspect so what are the each of these individual players how they can contribute to meet this this is more of a preparatory step right so because for us to see the growth first thing we need to prepare our right so the preparation part is first thing is education so if you see what is happening in the like the government is also doing a lot of right so they are partnering i think mr sir mentioned about collaboration so the collaboration is very very important and key here so government if you see i think cbse already has 
uh, tied up with IBM and uh, Microsoft, and they are revisiting or they are getting the AI into the curriculum. They are trying to uh, set up some, uh, what do you call the, uh, the paradigms for how they can develop the or s develop the digital skill in the teachers. So these are some of the things which are going or which are the initiatives from the government stand. And if you take the industry is already doing a lot of things in terms of apprenticeship, internships, and all that. And academia is already doing or engaging uh, industry in designing the courses. And that, that is very, very important. Recently, I read one um, um, news where, no, I think McDonald's, you know, you all know McDonald's, right? McDonald's has tied up with Neswadia um, College in Pune, and they're offering a course on BBA in retail operations. So, so I think more such initiatives has to happen because that no, the, the courses, the relevance of the courses will be more apt. So that is the education part. Okay, the next thing is infrastructure. So having the theoretical knowledge, is that sufficient? May not, right? We need to have some exposure. We need to have some good labs and all that. So the infrastructure is an important. So from a government standpoint, I think they are doing their bit. I think you might have already know about uh, uh, the Bharat Net initiative where no, the government is trying to, what do you call, sync up all the around 2,50,000 2, 2, gram panchayats. Um, they want to connect through fiber net such that no, they'll get the internet access and all that. So that is one big initiative the government is already taking. And they've already completed phase one and phase two is in progress. And I, I propose to get completed uh, sometime this year. So that is one. Similarly, I think some of the core areas right where we cannot in equipment and lab, I think the, 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 the technology here comes into picture. So we were talking about virtual reality and augmented reality, right? So this is going to help. And again, no, this cannot just like that happen with the educational institutions. I think again, the industry and the education um, institu institutions need to work together in setting these simulated environments such that no, it can be easy for us to definitely understand Visualize because these high tech industries, it is very costly and it will be very difficult to get access to these setups. So, that is the second thing. The third thing is interesting thing is uh, the what is this cognitive intelligence is what we are talking a lot. What, what's happening is, I think even Mohan Reddy sir mentioned in his speech that humans and machines are going to work together. That, that's the going to be the future. So, so far, right, when we when we train people when we groom people now we only groom them in terms of they working together with other human beings but i think slowly we also need to create an environment or setup where no they also need to start thinking about working with robot or with, working with a minimized version of robot or whatever so that is another aspect which we need to think about and coming to social and behavioral aspects i i, I think i don't need to spend much time this is very important but even i think the the government has considered this and uh, if you guys have uh, read through the national education policy of uh, which has been drafted recently, I think they have given a very significant importance for this. the life skills is one important. And they want to give all these activity-based learning from the schools with, with, at the age of three only, kids should start learning all that. Though they are there with corporate schools, but I think they are slowly getting into the government schools as well as part of the policy. So these are some of the things. So what I'm trying to convey here is like, the skill is an important aspect, and we need to know the theoretical knowledge. The education has to play a role there. We need to have a proper infrastructure, and wherever that is not possible, we need to see how we can definitely get that uh, collaborating with industry. And the third thing is social and behavioral skill. If all these are there, then I think we should be able to get whatever we are looking for. This is the first step, the preparation part. So now you're all equipped. So the students got trained. So what next? So I think. Probably a student from MBA college, a student from uh, engineering college, they all get into an enterprise, right? So I think we all will be working. So what is that we need to do? How we can grow this, grow this organization, right? That accelerating, how we can accelerate that. So that is the story we are going to go uh, the next slide. So for this, what I, what I want to show here is there are three parameters I thought we can talk about. One is productivity, scalability, and innovation. And I have a reason for that. The productivity is more for developing internally as an enterprise. Suppose if I'm an organization, what is it I need to do? I need to scale, right? How, so for that, what I need to do? I need to do more. How I can do more? 
because probably my resources may be constrained so how i can do more i can do more if i can improve the productivity right so that is an important so you might be wondering already the automation is there all that what else extra we need so we are slowly moving away from automation because automation is also becoming unmanaged why because the data is so much of data is getting exploded changed so even if you automate something you need to keep on changing it maintaining it and all that. so why can't we make it autonomous or why why can't we make it self skilled so that is what is happening today but whatever you are seeing the self driving cars and all that is nothing but they are trying to learn they are trying to maintain themselves what is the uh, uh, autonomous aspect so even i just want to give an example from oracle so we have i don't know how many of you have heard about 18c the oracle 18c um, database the latest version uh, it has this feature called autonomous so what it does is it is a it, it self provides in the sense self provision so it can install by itself it can maintain by itself it can patch by itself and uh, th this is what is the self provision right self driving the next thing is self securing so nowadays you know how how much important the security is because we have we have heard about lot of data breaches and security aspect so how is that we can probably make it a self securing and, and you you know what the study shows that 85% of the time though the breach is happening there is already a patch available so the thing is we are not applying the patch on time because of which we are seeing the breach. so in spite of having 85% of the time the patch is available because because of whatever reasons right because we didn't put it as a priority or we didn't put um, some resource there to do it or we don't want to allow the downtime to happen for whatever reasons because we are not applying the patch we are not seeing we are seeing the breach but there is always a solution so if you can make it a self secure so the thing is whenever there is a patch automatically the database itself will apply the patch and make itself more secure self securing right the third thing is uh, self repairing so if something goes down it automatically gets back to the uh, its its itself it can self repair and all that so this is what is autonomous right so productivity is by having these things in place i think we should be able to get the things more and more um um uh, agile and they can change on the fly and they can be more relevant and more up to date the second thing is scalability okay now what happened was as an organization we have they have done whatever they have improved and all the departments are internally inter, um, internally whatever um, collaborating well and all now the next thing is model cycle so the thing is as an organization i want to go beyond my boundaries so i want to expand i want to diversify so what are the means and how is that i can do so the uh, the, the enablers are like if you see today the digital trans the most abused uh, word as you know so what is happening is you have so many opportunities you can do business on a mobile phone you can do on your ipad on your mobile or whatever, whatever. so you have a lot of these things but how you can really align all these things and scale your business is second important thing. so once you are satisfied with what you have what you have to achieve within the organization your next step will be how i can expand how i can so that is an important thing which you need to remember the third thing is the innovation part the innovation part is like it is a cycle so typically what happens is we already have data we we will be converting that data the observations right the data is nothing but your observations from observations what we will be doing we'll be coming out with insights so we'll transform the insights into what insights into ideas and ideas will be experiments and experiments will come out with a final something which will innovate and which will give you some true solution right so i i thought that these are the three things which will help in terms of taking or achieving this accelerated growth so first thing is productivity scalability is going to the next level the innovation is taking further so if i want to diversify if i want to think about some new solution right that is what is your innovation so i think if we can focus on these three areas i think we can definitely achieve the um, uh, the acceleration accelerated growth as a company and when we do that as a company i think together we all can achieve it as a what as a nation as well right so that is what is my this one. so i know i have only uh, one minute so i just want to conclude one uh, with one thing you all know a plus b whole square is equal to what a square plus b square plus 2ab right so a is a is the industry b is the academia right so a square plus b square is like they can if they can excel 
there will be a square plus b square one. But if they can together excel, then you will get the bonus of 2ab, which is nothing but your skilled students or skilled uh, lecturers or skilled industrialists or everybody skilled and we can, we can achieve the mission of skilled India. Thank you.